Critical Minds. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite characters, which is Ice T. And uh, basically, I'm going to go over his entire uh, performance throughout every season. Um, I hope you guys enjoy, and uh, let's get into it. All right. So first things first. When you meet Ice-T for the first time, he's actually from season two. For the first season, I guess they figured they had enough black people with Monique. But since Monique was about to be out of the picture, they were like, we need a new black person. So they brought on Ice-T. And you know what? I kind of like Ice-T. Now in the beginning, let's not lie here, he came up in there dressed in like a tracksuit and a gold chain. And I'm like, okay, what are you guys doing here? You know, like... Yes, some people, some black people dress like this, but like, ain't he supposed to be a detective or some shit? But whatever, I'm assuming that uh, they were trying to go for this whole, you know, here's the stereotype, but we're gonna flip your mind sort of thing. And I'm like, I'm just gonna roll with it. But his fashion sense throughout the season is very interesting. It's more like he kind of evolves from, well not evolves, <clears throat> he doesn't really evolve from that, it's more like... He changes from looking like a stereotypical gangster to looking like a stereotypical pimp than to looking kind of just like a casual guy going to work. You know, like, as the seasons go by, he stops wearing tracksuits and starts wearing, like, a tie and, like, a vest and, like, some really posh-looking, like, brightly colored shirts. And, like, his hairstyle kind of makes him look like a pimp, too. And I'm like... You look really cool, but why? You know, it's like, why are you doing this? I like it, but I want to know why. And a lot of the times it doesn't really fit with his character, because you feel like his character would be, I don't know. It's more like you you wouldn't really see that. I see him as a leather jackets kind of guy. But then, you know, as the seasons go on, I feel like they're trying to fit his character towards what the rest of his outfit is, because as the seasons go by, he stops kind of being that background character he kind of gets more development he kind of becomes more and more of a of a person okay so if any of you have watched criminal minds which i'm assuming you would have considering the name of my channel you would have met someone named david rossi and david rossi is like a weird combination of iced tea and detective munch like like if you had like a kind of sad romantic life that John Munch had and also the way that he can interact with younger people from Ice-T you would have David Rossi. I'll go way more in depth with this in another video but um what I like about Ice-T is that he does develop and change mainly because they kind of had to because I feel like in the beginning he was really two-dimensional you know, he was kind of, like, just, like, a black guy, but, like, he's also not quite, like, every, like, he's not quite Malcolm X or, or Martin Luther King. Like, they're trying to make this, like, weird flip on the angry black guy kind of thing, but he was so, <sighs> he was still two-dimensional about it. Anyway, as the seasons go by, and I'm gonna throw in some spoilers here, just, spoilers, you know, you might as well not watch this video if you don't want to hear any spoilers. But, um, there was an episode where Olivia was, go was like, going undercover in a prison. And was trying to find the security guard rapist dude. Because apparently they, they were just, like, raping willy-nilly in this prison. Which, I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually something that happens. But, um, anyway, he's undercover as a security guard as well and uh he's like he's like walking in the he's walking around and he hears that there's this uh commotion downstairs that someone is you know probably having sex with an inmate or whatever and he's like i think that's olivia and uh when he goes down there and he basically just beats the crap out of the guy when well, he doesn't beat the crap out of the guy he just like roughs him up to get him away from olivia and uh that was like kind of like a turning point for his character 
after that moment, he and Olivia were closer friends, which I'd imagine, of course they would. But um, it was more like after that, you kind of get more and more development out of him. You realize how much he's all about helping the people he cares about. He's a way more caring person than you initially thought at the beginning. Like, in the beginning, he looks like he's like some single single bachelor dude that ain't got nobody, and it's just all into his work, and he just came out of Vice or something. I mean, not Vice. He came out of uh, narcotics. I guess that's the same thing. But, um, you know, so he's all, like, still kind of in the zone of being undercover like that. But uh, in actuality, he has a son who he barely really talked to because he went into... He went into undercover work and barely saw his family. And it was sad because his son began to, like, hate him. He even changed his last name to his mother's last name. And I'm just like, why would you do that? You know, Tutuel is a cool name, man. But, you know, he was like, you were never there for me. So I'm going to go along with who my mother is. And it was sad because you can see that he feels like he abandoned his son when he was just doing his work. You know, I feel like, I feel like he was a great dad, but he did his work because he felt like he was needed somewhere. And, um, later on in the, in the series, he meets back up with his son who is now working, no, I think he's in school at this moment because later on he works with like teenage runaways and whatever. But before that, uh, when he met him again, you know, he was just like, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't want to talk to you, you know. And he was just like, but like, I'm back now. I can, we can talk, we can have a relationship. And he's just not having it. And I'm like, oh man, you know. Like, as a person who didn't really have their father physically around for the beginning of my life. I remember when my dad came back. I mean, well not came back, it's more like I went to live with him. But, um, he was in the military, so he was gone, like, all the time. And my parents were separated, so I never really, I never really knew him like that. He would call, like, a lot. Don't get me wrong. Don't think that he's a bad dad, because he's a great dad. It's just that, you know, he wasn't physically there, so I kind of just never really had that connection with him. And when I began to see him more often, it was... It was weird for me. It's still kind of weird for me now, but it's like I'm finding it easier. And I think I went a different way than uh, Tutuolo's son. His son went straight to anger. I wasn't, I don't think I was there yet because when he came, like, kind of physically came back into my life, I was younger. So I was kind of just like, I mean, I guess you're my dad, you know, I'm like, whatever about it. But with him, I felt like it was way, way too long, you know, he was in college already, he was kind of done with his childhood, you know, there was nothing he could really do, he can't just buy him a milkshake and it'd be all right, you know, which is killing me, because the milkshake and the root beer float is, like, a staple for, like, abandoned child syndrome or something, but, um, it was just, uh, it was interesting to see that, because I kind of identified with him, and I always thought, you know, if it had been longer, if I hadn't have talked to him for longer and and I only just met him now, you know, how would I feel about that? You know, and the fact that they had a character like that in the story made me feel like it made me feel like his character is realistic. It was interesting to see the other side of that, you know, me being like me feeling like his son it makes me wonder if that was how my dad was like and <clears throat> and I really I really thought that was great you know it made his character seem more realistic it was adding dimension to his character you know he was no longer two dimensional he was a fully fledged human being and I remember there was an episode where uh John Munch was making jokes about, oh, like, what have you got to hide? And he's like, oh, I'm a Republican. And at this moment, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I like you then. But then I remember, this is, like, way back when. This is, like, 2000-something. I know it's not that long ago, but when it comes to how people talk, how people function, 
fashion, just everything. It's like night and day from now since then. But um, he said he was a Republican. And when he found out his son was gay, I was so scared. I was like, please, man, your son already feels like he's been abandoned, you know, like at least push through it for him. And at the beginning, the way that they did this is that they made it, they made it so that he wasn't fully accepting of it at first, because I was like, he's, if he just goes fully fledged, hates on him, I'm going to hate his character so much. But if he just automatically accepts him, that's going to ruin his character too, because that's not how a regular person react, it would take some time, you know, especially with the kind of characteristics he has, especially since he's a Republican, you know, some things are going to take some time, and it did take some time, you know, over the courses of some seasons, you know, he doesn't talk about it, because I don't think he's the kind of guy that really talks about his family life like that, but even in the moments when you see him with his son, it's like, he kind of just has, like, this, he's not off put by it it's more like he's half worried for his son because he knows how people are he knows that you know gay bashings are a thing and he just doesn't want to hear that I mean he literally works with special victims unit he sees uh like sodomized men dying at the hands of people who hate gay men he doesn't want to see that you know I mean god forbid if he was in hate crimes but at the same time he's like I'm not sure how this goes you know I don't want to I don't want to hurt your feelings, so I'm going to be like, I'm still going to be your dad, but like, this is kind of weird for me, you know? It's like, it's weird for him. He doesn't hate it, but he's not, you know, completely informed about it, because why would he, you know? He takes the time to develop becoming a good father to him in that way, you know, respecting him and understanding, you know how his life is going to be not just in like I'm not saying it's a lifestyle I'm just saying you know how his life is going to be in the sense that he's not going to have this whole like baby shower and wedding thing that he probably thought about you know and the whole his whole dreams that he's ever had for his son you know it's probably always been like oh it's a man and a woman you know they're gonna get married have babies and blah, blah 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 now he has to realize that he has to change that picture in his mind that it's you know his son and now his like soon-to-be son-in-law you know that sort of thing has to go through his mind you know and I think that kind of shook him a little bit but over time he really started to understand you know this is my son, I have to support him, and as the seasons go by, you know, as I said, you know, he does get more and more into his son's life, sometimes his son helps him out with cases, because a lot of the times in SVU, they have a lot of, like, teenage runaway kind of things, and he interacts with them a lot, so, you know, sometimes he'll pop up, and he'll be like, oh, what's up, you know, this, this, and this, now, there was this case where, Apparently, his cousin had, like, I think murdered this woman or something. I'd have to go back to that. In fact, I'm probably going to review this episode. So, if you don't want to hear about this, you know, I say skip to after that. I'll find out the thing and I'll put it in the subtitles. But, um, anyway, so in this whole thing, you know, he murdered this girl. And it turns out that, like... His cousin was, like, not his cousin. It was, like, his half-brother. But, like, also his uncle. Which is really, really fucked up. <laughs> like, apparently his mother was raped by his grandfather. And she sent him away to, like, her... Uh, her grandmother gave him to someone else. I'm not 100% sure. I'll watch the episode and tell you about it later. But, um... He kind of blamed his mother for all this anger that he had to kill these women. And uh, what was really interesting is that uh, Ice T's son was like, he's been my cousin this whole time. You know, he's a good friend of mine. I don't want to go against him. You know, he's like, I don't want to, I don't want to put my cousin in jail. I don't want to put my brother in jail. 
and I see he's like, what the fuck, man? Like, he killed some people. I know you love your cousin, but like, what the shit? And what I will say about Ice-T, though, is that he has this amazing capacity to, like, separate himself from a case that is to do with him. Like, I feel like this show does too much justice for cops. I don't mean to be rude. I'm just saying, like, I feel like if something like this happened to somebody, I don't think they would be this detached from the case like that. I feel like they'd be all over it because it's to do with their family, you know? They care about their family, so they'd be all about it. But this one, he's, like, cool and collected, and it's like, I'm just trying to do my job. I mean, like, when it came to, like, his son not wanting to testify against his cousin, he was like, dude, you might want to do that. But when it came to everything else, he was really chill about it. And I'm like, it takes a lot to have that kind of control. And I can't believe that, you know, cops are that cool and collected like that. I honestly think when it comes to, like, their family, they would be pretty upset. But... I don't know. Uh, But anyway, as... I guess that's the end of spoiler season. But um, as the series goes by, you know, you get more detectives, you get new detectives. But Ice-T, Olivia, constant. They have a great relationship, you know. And uh, after, I think, I want to say Elliot Stabler left. You guys should have known this already. I'm not even going to put a spoiler thing on here. But... Uh, after he left, you get, like, two new detectives, you get this, um, you get this Hispanic Latino guy, and you got this, uh, I meant Hispanic Italian guy, but, anyway, um, and, uh, this, uh, this white lady, uh, named Amanda Rollins, who is now, uh, Ice-T's, um, what's it called, uh, partner. And what's interesting about that is that in the beginning, you know, they're kind of separate and, you know, they kind of just do their cases and whatever. But it's weird. It's like their relationship was established off screen as they do police work, you know. And I wasn't too upset about the fact that I didn't see their development so much. But it was still somehow believable because you know how much Finn is willing to help out others. So, you know, you can imagine that he would be like that. But... I'll get into a character profile about Amanda, but all you really need to know right now is that she got a gambling problem. And Amanda was getting into some serious trouble, and Ice-T is like, you know, I can help you out. Like, let me help you out on this. I don't mind paying for something, you know, how much do you owe these gambling debts and whatever. And, you know, sometimes she takes it, sometimes she doesn't, but it's like the fact that he offers it every single time he feels like something's wrong with her really tells you. A, he's got a lot of money saved, and B, he really cares about her. He really cares about his job, he really cares about his partner, and he knows that people can get into problems that they can't get themselves out of, and it's not necessarily their fault. Like, she has a gambling addiction, you know? She needs to see help, and he's like, I know that even if you do see help, these gambling debts aren't going away. You know, she's got to pay him back, or, you know, she might die, and he's not going to let that happen. But at the same time, he keeps it in the down low because he knows stuff like that can ruin cops' careers. And he doesn't want to ruin her career. He feels like, you know, she's a good cop. She deserves to be here. She just has a gambling problem just like her dad or whatever. But I'll go into that in another video. But um, I thought it was uh, I thought it was interesting to see the dynamic that they have because it's nowhere near sexual. And it's another one of those relationships in this show, which I love so much. Where they can just be friends. And it's like, this show really taught me that you can literally just be friends with a guy and not have to worry about, like, sexual tension and blah, 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 blah. Like, no. They're just friends. You know, he just looks after her. And it's not even, like, in a brother-sister kind of way. You know, it's more of just a I'm-your-friend kind of way. You don't have to label it as brother and sister to defer them from being in a relationship together. It's already established. You don't need to say, oh, it's a brotherly, sisterly bond or nothing. No. It's just friendship. And I feel like Finn's friendship is, like, worth a hell of a lot more than a lot of people that I've seen. And don't get me wrong, I've got a lot of good friends. (laughs) But, um, like, the way that he conducts his friendship throughout the series, it shows 
kind of like a stronger bond than I think even Ellie and Olivia have because the way that they get into fights it's like it's kind of like a brother sister kind of thing which I wouldn't say is strong as just pure friendship because brother and sisterly bonds are kind of like you're already kind of related so you're always going to be connected so no matter what there's always going to be that connection but his kind of friendship like surpasses that it's like a weird kind of like a weird kind of connection that you can't even sever no matter how mad you get at Ice-T. Or no matter how mad he gets mad at you. It's like, it's stronger because there's no genetic kind of thing. You know, he's connected to you as a friend so hard that it's better than that, if you get what I mean. I feel like it probably seems like I'm reading into it too much. But it's how I feel about it though, you know. Like, his kind of friendship is golden. And I think it's the kind of friendship that a lot of people should have. It's a great... It's a great thing to see on television. Simply because seeing it can tell you a lot of things about yourself. Seeing it can tell you, you know, you can have that relationship too. You know, you can have that kind of friendship with someone that isn't even in your sexual orientation, like, is in your sexual orientation. You can have friends with people that are on the side of what you're attracted to. You can just have that relationship, and I think that's a good thing to put on TV. Because, like I said before, I'm sick and tired of having everybody just throw a male and a female together, and they're friends, but then all of a sudden they meet and they're, like, lovey-dovey. I mean, don't get me wrong, and I'll use this example, Castle is a good show, but... The fact that they got together, I was like, of course they can get together. Because you always put them together, you know. You got a main male lead and a main female lead. Throw them together, you know. It's, um, it's aggravating. But, uh, in the show, they, they show constant, they show constant examples of friendships that do not turn into romantic affairs. And, um... Even when they when they do have romantic affairs, it's it's through friendship, you know, but it's not all the time. Like, I will say, though, I do want Ice-T to have somebody. Because I feel like he wants somebody, and I think he deserves somebody. But he doesn't. And I'm like, I don't think I want him to go back to his wife, though. Like, they separated for a reason, and I feel like they're at peace with that. I don't think it's necessary for them to get back together. I mean, it's not like they have a young kid, and it's not like the kid is... Dra- like drastically needing attention from both parents or anything and I'm not saying you need to get back together for the kids or anything I'm just saying like there's really no reason to do that I really hope they don't but uh I do think he deserves some sort of companionship all right I think that's all I'm really gonna say bye to you right now I might make a part two later depending on if I really because I'm rewatching the season again I'm rewatching all SVU, like, all SVU again, and I think if I find any more, I'll make a second video about it, and, um, I'm gonna do some more character episodes, I'm thinking I might do Olivia next, I feel like I've got too much to talk about her, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a whole video about her, it's probably gonna last, like, 40 minutes, but, um, that's probably gonna come out maybe next week, week after that, something like that, but this is the last video of this week, I'm going to stick to this two-week schedule until after New Year's, and um, then I'll go back up to three. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope you really enjoyed this one, because I really enjoyed making this one. But uh, I'll see you guys on the flippity flips. Alright, everybody, thank you for watching, and I'm pretty sure you guys already know how to click on the next video or the previous video. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I would really appreciate it. And if you like this video, you can also press the like button. And, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys on the flippity flips. If it wasn't obvious already, I'm holding a cup of iced tea.